I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on limits. I'm going to share three questions on limits. We have selected these questions from previous test papers and I hope they will help you to understand the concept. Question number one is true or false. You need to justify your answer. A. If f of a exists, then the function is continuous at x equals to a. Is it true or false? B. A definition of derivative is limit x approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x. Is it typing error? Let me write this as h. Okay. C. If a function has limit at all points, it does not mean it will be differentiable on its domain. D. The limit x approaches 2 for x minus 2 whole square divided by absolute value of x minus 2 does not exist. E. Multiplying a plus b square root c by its conjugate results in a square minus bc. Right? I'd like you to answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. The very first one is, if f a exists, then the function is continuous at x equals to a. What do you think about this? I think this statement is not true, right? It is false. There is another condition which should be met and that is limit x approaches a for the function f of x should also exist. So the second condition is also important for a function to be continuous, right? That is kind of important. For example, uh, well, let's take this very simple example. Now, if I have a function here where the limit does not exist at some value a, but we know that the value exists. Let's say if we fill this up, then we know that this value exists and it is 2. However, there's a jump discontinuity. So both the value should exist, the limit should exist, and third thing is that the limit when x approaches a for f of x should also be equal to f of a, right? So basically there are three conditions for this to happen, right? Not just one of them. B. A definition of derivative is limit x approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This statement is also false since it is not x approaches 0, it is h approaching 0. Correct? So let me correct this one. It should have been, this should have been limit h approaching 0, right? For f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Clear? Okay. C. If a function has limit at all points, it does not mean it will be differentiable on its domain. Now, this statement is true. And you can always say that if I have a function here, for example, we have absolute function, right? The limit exists, it is a continuous function, however, it is not differentiable at this point, right? So, so a cusp or a corner is not differentiable. We'll talk about differentiability more in the next test. Now, D is the limit when x approaches 2 for x minus 2 whole square divided by absolute value of x minus 2 does not exist. Well, this statement is false. This exists. Now, as you can see, x minus 2 whole square over x minus 2, when we are approaching 2 from either side, it is going to be 0, right? It exists and it is equal to 0. You can actually find this limit, right? Now, E is, 
multiplying a plus b square root c by its conjugate results into a square minus b c. This is also false. It results into what? It results into a square minus b square c, right? So, b square c, correct? So, that is going to be the result, not this. So, I hope uh, these questions are perfectly fine. They're actually designed to make uh, you fall into the trap, as you can see. But these are very important questions from uh, the limits point of view. Okay, let's see question number two now. In question number two, uh, I have slightly modified this question from normal trend. Let's look into these solutions. Question number two is, the function f of x is defined by the graph. Determine the value of each expression, f of 3. That means value the function at 3. Now, this is filled in, which seems to be 1. So, I'm writing this as 1. Is that clear? B, limit of f of x as x approaches 4. Now, when you are approaching 4, you see this particular part of the graph where the value is 2.5. So, the value is 2.5. So, at x equals to 4, the function is continuous. It is a horizontal line and the value of y is 2.5. Limit when x approaches 0, that minus indicates from the left side. So, from the left side for the given function. Now, when you approach this value 0 from the left side, you are approaching the y value of 2. So, this value is 2. In fact, at 0, it has a limit. So, it's a whole, not continuous, but it has a limit at 2. Then we have d. The function, the limit of the function as x approaches 2. Now, when x is approaching 2, the value of the function is approaching 0 from both the sides. So, this is 0. E. Limit when x approaches minus 1 for the function. Now, at minus 1, we have a vertical asymptote. So, that does not exist. Now, f dash 2 is talking about derivative at 2. Again, we have a corner. So, this also does not exist. It is not differentiable, right? So, I've added two more questions here. G is limit when x approaches positive infinity. So, when you go positive infinity side, then you see that the value of the function is 2.5. So, this limit is 2.5. Limit when x approaches negative infinity, that is this side, right? We are approaching a value which is 1. So, that answer will be 1. Is that clear? Okay. Now, let me add one more question here. What is the value of the function at 0? You can see that at 0, the function is not really defined. So, this does not exist. There is a hole at 0. right? So, the limit exists, which is 2. However, the function is discontinuous, right? And uh, the value does not exist at 0. So, that helps you to understand uh, one of your true or false questions in question number 1. Right? Now, let's uh, try to see how to find limits of few functions. Here are two examples and then we'll take two more. Question number 3. Determine the limit of each function if it exists. If the limit does not exist, state that and explain or show why. The very first one is limit when x approaches 2 pi for x cube plus pi x square minus 5 pi cube. So this is all constants. We can just substitute 2 pi and then figure out the solution. So x e approaches 2 pi. So we can write 2 pi for x. So we get 2 pi whole cube plus pi times 2 pi whole square minus 5 times pi cube, correct? We are substituting for x the value of 2 pi. So, here we get 8 pi cube. Here we get pi times square will be 4 pi square. Here we have minus 5 pi cube. So, that is to say we have 8 pi cube and that is plus 4 pi cube minus 5 pi cube. 
So that gives us 8 plus 4, 12 minus 5 as 7. 7 pi cube. So the limit for this function is 7 pi cube. Clear? Now let's do the next question, which is limit of this particular function. So let me rewrite this with common denominators. So we'll write this as limit. X approaches 3. And the numerator side, we can take 3x as a common denominator. So we get x minus 3 here, right? And the denominator, we have x minus 3. So I could really write this as limit. x approaches 3. Now x minus 3, x minus 3. Uh, well, let me rewrite again, and then we'll do it in the next step. It is like this. x minus 3 over 3x times 1 over x minus 3. Correct? So as you can see, this x minus 3 and x minus 3 cancel. Now, you could substitute x as 3 and find the limit, right? So what we get here is limit x approaches 3 for 1 over 3x. And substituting 3 here, we get 1 over 3 times 3, which is 1 over 9. So limit of this function is 1 over 9. Clear? Part C is, we need to find the limit when x approaches 0 for square root of 3 minus x minus square root of x plus 3 over x. Now, it's a good idea to rationalize this, right? So, we could write this as limit x approaches 0. Uh, we'll write this as square root of 3 minus x minus we could also write this as 3 plus x, correct? x plus 3 or 3 plus x is one and the same thing. But that really helps us. Now, the conjugate is going to be square root of 3 minus x plus square root of 3 plus x, clear? Divided by square root of 3 plus x plus, sorry, uh, minus square root of 3 plus x. So that gives you limit x approaches 0 after rationalization. We get squares of these in the numerator with difference, right? So we get 3 minus x minus 3 plus x. And the denominator, we get x times square root of 3 minus x plus square root of 3 plus x. So that gives you limit x approaches 0. Now, 3 minus 3 is 0, and minus x minus x will give you minus 2x. We get minus 2x in the numerator, and in the denominator, we have x times all this, plus square root of 3 plus x. Now, you can cancel x and x, and once you do that, you can actually substitute x equals to 0 here. And then what do you get? You get minus 2 over, when you substitute 0 here, you get square root 3 plus square root 3, right? So you get 2 square root 3. Or 2 and 2 cancel, and you get your answer, which is minus 1 over square root 3. Is that clear? So I hope you can see this. So that is the result of the given question. So you need to rationalize. It's a good idea to write this as 3 plus x as it avoids a lot of confusion. And then we can simplify after cancellation, substitute x equals to 0. We get square root 3 plus square root 3, which I wrote as 2 times square root 3, cancelling 2s. We're left with minus 1 in the top and square root 3 here. The next question is to find the limit of... 2x divided by x plus 27 to the power of 1 over 3 minus 3. Now, in such questions, you could actually do substitution. So, let's substitute. Let's say u equals to x plus 27 whole cube or to the power of 1 over 3. So, let's make this substitution. That really means that u cube will be equals to x plus 27, right? So we could write this x as u cube minus 27. Is that clear? So we could write this as uh, x 
x equals to u cube minus 27. Now that is one part substituting for x. The other part is the limit. Now here, as you can see, if, uh, if uh, x approaches 0, in this case, then u approaches what value? u approaches cube root of 27 over which is 3, correct? So we are going to make these substitutions and then rewrite here as limit u approaches 3 and we have 2. So let's write 2 here. x is u cube minus 27 divided by u minus 3. Clear? So we could write this as limit u approaches 3 2 times. Now a cube minus b cube formula is very important to remember. Let me write down the formula here. Uh, a cube minus b cube can be factored as a minus b times a square plus a b plus b square. Okay. So we are going to factor the numerator. So I could write this as u minus 3 times u square plus 3 square which is well, I mean ub which is 3u let me write first plus 3 square which is 9 is that clear to you and the denominator we have u minus 3 now u minus 3 and u minus 3 cancel okay so what we are left with we are left with limit u approaches 3 in the numerator we have 2 times u square plus 3u plus 9 over 1, correct? Now substitute 3. So when you substitute 3 here, we get 2 times 3 square plus 3 times 3, which is again 3 square plus 9. So we get 9 plus 9 plus 9, right? So which is 2 times 27. So we get 54 as our limit. So the limit of this function is equal to 54. Limit of this function is found to be at 1 over square root of 3 with a negative sign, right? So that's how you're going to solve this, okay? So I hope these steps are absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.